All right, we're live, Tent Wisdom number 68. Matt, thanks for joining. Hey, thanks for having me again. So um, it was just a few short weeks ago, but um, we have some different topics to touch on today. And the main focus of today's live stream is going to be Facebook ads, and uh, we're going to take kind of a uh, deeper dive into them. And I think since that's, you know, since that's a topic, obviously any topics, anybody has questions or whatever, throw them in there. But um, you know, we've already, we already know who Matt is. We've already, um, kind of gone through, you know, the, the back end and so on. So I just think like it's, it's less of one of those like, um, deep conversations that maybe people don't want to interrupt with questions and more of a, ask me anything for both of us on this topic and anything. So please throw in the questions as they come, everyone. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, my first question regarding Facebook ads is, I mean, I know we talked a little bit behind the scenes, but I, I was told the targeting doesn't quite work the way that it used to. And as a window tint shop, you don't really necessarily know much about what your clients are interested in other than maybe cars. You know, it's super generic. Right. Um maybe target nicer things. Uh, it, it's tough to say exactly what you're going for. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have some advice on, mm -hmm. on that, it would be super helpful. So I think it's, um, it's, it's almost like instinctual. It's attractive to say, okay, I'm going into Facebook ads and you're going to say, well, I need to make a target audience. I need to figure out who these ads are going to be seen in front of. And um, I try to look at things like, not what's obviously what's the move to do, but what's just going to be maybe most effective. So uh -huh. in my mind, I'm always trying, I'm trying to say, I'm saying if you're in step one, if you're in kind of stage one of building ads and so on, I go, why not try to target people already looking for window tint to start off? So I guess my, my first and foremost, I'm just saying, I think the first Facebook ad anybody really should make should be retargeting ads for your website. Simple as that. Okay. I, I just think like, you know, because right then and there, once you do retargeting, that's your audience. People who already searched, found you, probably found three or four other companies for, you know, you're talking about what, 10, 20 people a day maybe find your company on a website. So then to retarget that 10 or 20 people a day accumulated over maybe you say for the last two weeks, because you don't really need to retarget them for 180 days. Um mm -hmm. You know, so a couple of weeks, it's extremely cheap to retarget those people. So I feel like the first place to, you know, harvest new customers is those people that saw you. You don't know really like you don't know their names yet. They didn't submit their information. But if you can convert one out of every 10 or two out of every 10 that saw your website, to me, that's better than saying, let me get in front of 100 people or 1000 people and see if I can get two out of those to, to buy from me. Right. OK, that makes a lot of sense. Um I guess the part that I, I totally, I've heard retargeting. Um, uh -huh. I've, let's see, through dabbling with Facebook ads already, haven't looked into much as far as videos, which is pretty pretty unusual for whatever I go in to do. I just decided to go head first and just try them out. So I've spent probably, I don't know, about 200 bucks a week when I've run run a different campaign, probably, three, probably two or three different times. No, three different times at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, playing around with the different ads, seeing what works a little better. Um, always seemed like video did a little bit better out of the stuff that I was just running. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, I, I'm, I take it that's out of the actual like Facebook ad manager. Like they're a little bit more business-esque looking software because yep. they try to make it real simple to just like get you going, but then they almost make it confusing because there's like three to four different ways to make an ad on Facebook. And it's really like <laughs> a yep. little frustrating actually trying to figure it out. Yep. So, so yeah, yeah go ahead. Would it, no, 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 go ahead. I was, I was so, basically throwing that over to you. So okay. you go to like the ads manager for that. Definitely the ads manager. Um, Sean, uh, just put in, in the chat, he put uh, put pics on your website, build an audience, then create a lookalike audience based on those people that have already looked at your site. So for the first step, uh, like Sean just okay. said, the first step for target, retargeting is putting the Facebook pixel on your site. Okay. And then once the Facebook pixel is on your site, then the, you can create an audience based on that pixel and characteristics mm -hmm. of that pixel. Um, now, like you said, once you jump in there, it can be a little overwhelming if you try to be 
and again, I'm just kind of telling you how how I get like the emotions that I feel when I jump in there. If you're trying mm-hmm. to get too perfect with everything and too, there's a lot of things you can do. So you right away, it's going to ask you, do you want to A, B test? And in my opinion, mm-hmm. no, you don't want to start by A, B testing. For the beginning, why don't you start by A testing? Because <laughs> you know what I mean? Because once you start A, B testing, now you're there's so many variables. So try to keep it simple. And that's why I think what Sean just said is simply let like retarget the people who are coming to your site. Then build a lookalike audience based on those people and let Facebook do its thing. And that's that's a great kind of like easy way to, to get in there. It's tricky when you're building an audience for something like window tinting. And I, I you know, I'd love to follow up with McCoy on this because I, I feel like, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I say I, I, I wanted to dive deeper into when he says he builds an audience on a window tinting page. To me, people... I, I, I understand that people will follow a window tinting page because you have car enthusiasts, you have, you know, if you post like, you know, nice cars and so on, you're going to get people who like, like the car aspect of it, like maybe like car apps, you love seeing the new cars. Like I know I love RDB um, in LA because they're putting out, you know, badass car apps and so on. But with window tinting, how many times do you see a customer for window tint? Once every what, four or five years? Yeah, depending on if they have a couple of them to do, uh, but yeah, you know, you shouldn't see them that often unless they have more cars to do. Right. Maybe you see like a husband, then you see his wife's car or, Mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But like, so the idea that you're going to like build and this audience of people, of thousands of people that are going to follow your window tinting company, then you're going to capture them when they're ready for window tinting. To me, it sounds romantic, but it's not as like get the gears grinding, we need customers today, like, let's make this happen. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not looking for a group of people to, to talk to and have fun with. I'm looking for, like, who's looking for tint right now? And then, like, how do I get them in the garage? You yeah, know? Sean says every every year in New York. <laughs> That's actually, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. what's funny about that is because you have the inspection stickers there. So you actually, like, yeah, you would every year in New York, which is extra funny. But, yeah, which is, is a place like here, yeah. you don't have those kinds of yearly inspections and stuff. So you're exactly right. Like, you're putting on films that you don't want to fail. So if you have a customer coming back to you in a month, then usually there's an issue unless right. they have that extra car. So. First of all, I just want to point out like what you, what you just said about Sean or what Sean just said about every year in New York because he has inspections. Like that's one of those things that had to have felt like crushing, like soul crushing when <laughs> they like put in man- mandatory inspections. But then you see like shops get creative and like the services they offer. And like if you're get, see, getting to see a customer every year, that's a good thing. That's a yeah. great thing. Yeah, that, that, that's like, yeah, one of those just like background things that I, I wouldn't have thought of in the very beginning because, yeah, it's you think of it as more of a hassle than anything. I mean, I'm sure it deters plenty of people away, but you it clearly still have a defined market there where you have repeat business because they like what you did last year. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to start moving to New York now. Right. <laughs> right. The <laughs> most illegal brings the most businesses of it. Like, that's how <laughs> yeah, these are like drugs, right? The more illegal you make them, the more drug dealers you're going to have. People people added me to a group a while back around here to change the state laws in Michigan to make them legal, uh, more legal around the whole things. And to be honest, when you compare Michigan state laws to a lot of other states, they, they have not been that bad. Um, you can go as dark as you want on the back. You can nothing on the front except top four inches. But most most of the time, if you have a lighter shade, nobody notices or cares anyway. So that kind of lets you sneak by. And they're technically not supposed to like pull you over just for window tint anyways. So stirring up the law might have even made it worse, but it's funny. It's like, okay, let's go hard into making it all illegal just so <laughs> we have more repeat business. Yeah, and I mean, California, like, California, to me, it feels super illegal. Like, the, the way it's like, you know, it has to be clear on the front windows, like clear, clear. There's no, like, 35 or anything. It's like clear, clear on the front windows, clear, clear on the windows. Oh, really? Yeah, and, like, to me, California seems like kind of um like a no nonsense type of state when it comes to stuff like that. But then from real life experience, I think the cops have better things to do and everyone gets window tinned and it's not actually a problem. So it's kind of mm-hmm. interesting. Like, you know. Yeah. I, I've noticed as long as the rule of thumb, like you can always catch a cop on a bad day, but rule of thumb is always like, you know, just don't try and stand out too, too bad. Like if you have a flashy sports car 
and you do a bunch of stuff to it, yeah, you're going to be more of a target than right. the guy with, with an Explorer with or some light windows on the front. Or if you've got like a that, Nissan so. Altima with like a loud muffler and dark tinted windows, then you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're telling them to look at you at that point. You want the attention, but yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. So jumping back into Facebook audiences, um, there are some audience that I think, audiences that I think are fun to play around with. Um, there are... So there's there's a couple there's a couple ways that I think there's like hacks to getting good audiences. And one of them is there's audiences where you can say like people who purchased a new car recently. So that's actually an audience. So like if you pick that as an audience and you target that audience with an ad specifically to did you just get a new car? Well, uh -huh. do you have window tint on that car? And like yeah. that whole do you did you, did you just get a new car and you're showing it to people who just got a new car like I feel like in, in ads, that's sort of like, yes, I did. You automatically yeah. feel included and attached to that ad and you know they're talking to you. Uh huh. So I think that's like definitely just like one category if you're looking to cat or like target, um, you know, uh, people on Facebook using not like using a, an audience beyond just retargeting. I think one place to start is, you know, people who just bought a car for flat glass. There's life events like just purchased a new home. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So those are actual like sortable, you know, ways to um, ways to target people on there. So, I think you go oh, ahead. Sorry. sorry, I just went to YouTube. I think YouTube's down right now, which is really weird. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to share something, but yeah. Sorry, I got distracted. No, um, no worries. So the the little yeah, the little uh, the ba basically, what you were saying earlier with the with the Facebook pixel, make a lookalike audience, and then whittle that down to retarget them on Facebook. That that to me makes perfect sense. I wish I saw just basically a summary of that uh, when I was going into this because it makes purpose perfect sense. You know how you can kind of like be looking around at a lot of different videos and information, and then it's just like the one obvious thing that's just like, oh, yeah, that. I want to do that. Like that, that to me is what that is right there. That yep. makes sense. I'm going to do that literally right after this. <laughs> yep, and, and what it does is a lot of people, just because you retarget them, they become under the assumption that you're, you're everywhere. I'm seeing you everywhere now. You must be the shop to go to, mm -hmm. especially if some of those posts that you make retargeting your customers aren't just ads, but they're just like, Hey, look at this car we just completed. Hey, look at this other car we just completed. Like you don't have to say, it doesn't have to be like a graphic ad. It could be like super cell phony, like real deal. Like, Hey, here's an F-150 we just completed and so on. And you know, if here's where you can get down to nitty gritty, if you like, and I feel like that's kind of right up your alley because you're obviously technical and organized. And some of that organization can then happen where you can create a page on your website, let's say, um, specifically towards let's say F-150s or pickup trucks, either way, okay? Mm. And it's all about pickup trucks and all about, you know, or F-150s or so on. And then you basically, you know, that page is going to go out there into the organic Google world and people are going to organically find it in Google search, especially in your right. area. Because I doubt there's, like if I search F-150s in Detroit, F-150 window tint in Detroit, I bet you there's not that much content. And if you were to put up a page on, you know, a video on YouTube, a page on your website, maybe a post on Facebook, those pages, those will become indexed and you'll start to dominate the search there. And if you then retarget people who go to that page on your website with an with ads specifically of F-150s that you've done, mm -hmm. you're gonna start to see a crazy conversion. And you do that with like Dodge Chargers. And like if you start hitting that micro down going into like, and you're talking about spending pennies and converting those into customers versus trying to go broad and spend 50 or $100 and see what comes in. You're spending pennies and you're converting every single person that ever finds you. Yeah, that's good. Because I've noticed with the advertising I have going on right now, I probably, like the inquiries keep coming in. As soon as the ads stop, they kind of disappear. Um, but the ad campaign that I ran for last week was 200 bucks for the entire week. So if you, you know, if you only have a couple cars that come in, there goes, you know, most of your ad money, you at least recouped it and made some, but the lower you can get that cost for sure, the better. Um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. So kind of free hack I would say is just so everybody knows it knows, um, on Facebook. So like 
a, f- a completely free little tip is like not free for me. What I'm saying is free for you to execute. Um, is yeah. you know you may make a post on Facebook and it only gets let's say seen by thirty people, and maybe mm-hmm. you get one like, and that sucks. But that post is somewhat likely like posts do get indexed by Google and come in the search results. And if your post does, and and I can't put a number on it, it's going to be based on the quality of the post. And do you have a lot of text in the post? So like if you're just posting like solar effects, 5% or geoshield 5% installed on this Honda Civic, like that's probably not going to get indexed by Google. But if you write a paragraph or two talking about, you know, this Honda Civic was tinted with solar effects, you know, 5% wind window tint and blah, blah, blah with window tint and, and Honda Civic and so on, that post can get indexed by Google. And right then and there, you're going to start to get traffic from Google to your Facebook page. And then you're potentially retargeting people who interacted with that post from the back end too, because you can do retargeting based on interactions. Okay. So no, that's good. Free I posts, ended up, uh, I'm sorry, free sorry. posts on Facebook, it's worth doing. It's not about okay. like one a day. It's about like, can you do five in a day? Because maybe one or two of those get indexed. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. So, and uh, I'll periodically check Google. I'll, I'll switch over to like anonymous mode and check uh, in my area, it, it just retyping in, you know, common search terms, see where things pop up. And there's definitely like what I've noticed with mine, because a lot of the stuff is going right onto YouTube through my live streams, I'm at least completely dominating the video section in my oh, area. Kill it. And yeah. Did they, do they There's come up nobody in the Google else. search itself, not just on YouTube, but in Google search? Uh, yeah, it's Google search. Whenever it wants right. to show up videos, it's literally just a long list of just me. Nobody yeah. <laughs> nobody what, else. What do you think that does? And then like um, yeah. Patrick just put in here, I'd love to work just on trucks all day. No shrinking and just lick them and stick them. Well, you can do that by overwhelming the internet with content of you installing tint on trucks you'll get more trucks yeah i don't think it's a coincidence that like one of my earlier cars was an audi and then i got another audi and then i got a bmw and then i got a cadillac and now i got literally like a a ct6 and then i got an xt6 and it's just kind of like hmm lays off it's interesting yeah Yeah. and they were all like carbon jobs which is really fucking cool Mm -hmm. um so super happy about that. Yep. And then what you were saying about putting the pictures and stuff on your website is I've tried to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I periodically will add a bunch and I've also been making dedicated pages for basically like, um, so I have like a gallery right off the beginning. It's, sure. it's primarily just pictures, shows off the work and then you click on it, you get some more pictures and you get the full video live stream and some text on the side at least about what was going on it. Um, just some like keywords and stuff that would hopefully pop up a little bit better. But you can actually like, you know, it's it's for me, it's a portfolio of what I've done. Yep. And then I'm just going to keep adding to that. And you can just do page after page so, after page. Right. So best case scenario, like you said, you have a gallery and that's going to be your curated posts or curated pictures that really mm-hmm. sh- like highlight your work. They shouldn't feel like, you know, they shouldn't feel 100 years old. I'm just saying sometimes not to you. I know they don't. But I'm saying like if you have a gallery on your website and it has six pictures and they're 100 years old, yeah. that's not a good gallery. It should be right. tons and tons of great pictures. Then, like you said, create dedicated pages on your website. These are static pages that you build out. They're linked probably in your menu somewhere. And these are pages that focus on one topic. So the same way you have an automotive, a residential, a commercial window tinting page, you can have a page about Tesla window tinting and a page about F-150 window tinting and a page about ceramic coating an F-150 so these can be static pages. So you could do, for example, like, you know, something about like F-150s and it could talk about on that one page window tinting. And then you could talk about paint protection and then you could talk about ceramic coating all on the same page. And what, what's going to happen is people looking for any services regarding F-150s are going to find your page. Then uh-huh. the third layer of that is now as you're doing F-150s, start creating blog posts and make each project a blog post. And those are going to be quick. Oh, yeah. You're going to type quick. You're going to embed a video maybe, put some pictures, a couple of captions. They're, maybe they're not going to be the best pictures. Maybe it's not going to be the best looking F-150. Maybe it's a little rusty or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's creating fishing lines for you to hook a future customer in. And it's easy and fast. And blog posts go. It's like a news post. So like once, you know, a few days after you have more, every time you post blog posts, they move downward essentially. And you start, Mm -hmm. you don't see them eventually. So what I'm saying is if it's not the prettiest car, it's fine because it's not your gallery. It's not your dedicated pages. It's just the engine that's saying your website's growing. Exactly. Most of the time 
you know, you, I mean, you could get easily caught up in trying to make sure everything looks super well. Um, but most people aren't looking at what you're doing anyways. So, and most people are scrolling through. So when you have something that looks like, I don't know, halfway crappy, like they're, they're on to the next thing already. So most of the time they don't pay attention to where it even comes from. So you're your own worst critic on all that kind of stuff. hundred so. percent. You don't even know what people are looking at or like thinking, like they may look at a page and you focused on the colors of something and of some box and like they scrolled past that. They never saw it clicked off. Like people don't, mm -hmm. it's very hard to be um, like to judge how other people think and see something based when you're so deep into it, it's very difficult. So you shouldn't even really acknowledge it. I feel like, yeah, that goes hand in hand with like when you're presenting a job to a customer. I mean, I've had people come back and then, uh, like, you know, when, when you have an issue with a car, um, sales guy would go out with a customer and then the, the sales guy would then point at what they saw as the imperfection and go, Oh, this, and the customer would go like, Oh no, I didn't notice that. Yeah, that one too. Come over here. I want to show you this window. And then you yeah. create a bunch more work for yourself. Yep. Yep. And Sean said, um, Sean mentioned when you upload pictures, make sure it has metadata. So, you know, metadata is uh, like, for example, like renaming the, uh, renaming an image or a video, you can tag pictures and videos and so on. <laughs> that little bit of information makes it's a huge true. difference. Yeah. Huge difference. Yeah, yeah. So like my thumbnails, a lot of them will all have something pretty generic behind them as far as like what's related to the video. So then the thumbnails then show up in Google Images. So it's just like another way to try and like there's so there's like for every one post, there's like a thousand little things that you can do on the back end to try and at least like eke it along a little bit right. better. It gets <laughs> it gets exhausting. And the crazy thing is for anybody like watching who doesn't have a website, you have no idea what you're missing out. Like so many people are like, oh, I don't even have a website. I get all my business from Google or whatever it is. And like, you have no idea what you're missing if you don't have a website. Okay. You know, to be honest, I almost want with, with my little chat on, I almost want people only on Facebook right now before I was like, okay, I'm going to make well, my website and, and I've done you, it. But you can put the Facebook chat bot on your website. That's true. Actually, oh, like the I have, Facebook I have the Wix bot. one. And you can Let me change. I got to change that. I got to change that. No, you're absolutely right. Um, because the, I mean, they do like a couple of different things, um, whether it be like the, the tint was quotes or um, the little chat thing in the lower corner. I should swap that out for the chat bot. Man, it's made life so, so much better. <laughs> I bet. So why don't we jump into talking about that a little bit? Because your chat yeah, bot sure. is the best thing I've ever seen for like, it's like the best, easiest, <laughs> but like seriously, nobody's like, what I'm saying is like, it's, it's so simple to set up, right? But it takes yeah, that was... thought. It, it's not, it doesn't take any money, but it takes thought and it takes like kind of thinking mm -hmm. step by step and it takes an organization of what, if, if, and what. So like you hit the nail on the head because a lot of times it's like, what are your hours? And you click it and that's the end of it. It doesn't like continue a conversation. People don't think after that one step. And like, mm -hmm. I kind of, if you could talk about like, you know, what you did and how it's going for you. Yeah, sure. So uh, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, and one of the fun things about it is like it can be we we can have actually like a little collaborative effort with everybody in the community that wants to participate. So uh, I'm going to be releasing a video that kind of goes over like an, an outline, shows um, a little bit more of what's going on with it, because on the back end, without seeing it, it might sound more complicated than what it is. But uh, there's this uh, website, manychat.com. Um, you can basically create your own chatbot template. So what that does is, like, it, it's if you've ever used an interactive website builder, it's a lot of drag and drop and literally connecting lines together. You can have whatever pictures you want. You can have whatever messages you want, and then they, they, the whatever the responses are triggers like the next page. So it's just a funnel system to kind of guide people down, showing them like a, a small tour of what you're about and what your company is about related to what they want to get uh, for, you know, for their car. So because there's so much information that you don't know right off the bat when they reach out to you, like, you know, that you're going to be copying and pasting a lot of messages that you sent to other people. It was one of the first things I noticed when I was running Facebook ads was, was like, oh my God, this is exhausting. And, and like, you know, I copied, pasted, had stuff on extra notepads, started making keyboard shortcuts and that, that really helps. But you just don't necessarily have the time to always cater as well as you want to, to every customer. So 
when somebody messages, it's it's as simple as like get started, and then it showed a little window of like, hey, what windows are you looking to have tinted, or what are you interested in, and then they can from there you try to whittle it down to um, what what are the most common things. So they can always just bypass it and then just type a message and like ask what they're interested in right off the bat, and then you'd get a notification. But if they go down the little rabbit trail, um, the way it's designed right now is you would click on like, you know, do, do you want the sides and the back? Do you want the front doors? Do you want, you know, the whole thing with the windshield? Whatever the most common options that you want to offer are. And then it'll then specify into like truck or SUV, you know, depending on where you want to go as far as your pricing goes. And then it'll like once you figure out that much, it's like, OK, now I can throw either a price or whatever I want to at them. And so I set mine up to not only show them the price, um, but to also show them some some images of like the display boards that most shops have hanging up in the showroom. So it'll not they'll have like some visual representations with the film. And then it'll also pop up just some, it could pop up pictures of cars. It, like I like to include my live streams right in the very beginning, um, still playing around with it. But yeah, it just takes them on a little visual tour of your company, explaining pricing, film options, um, and then collecting that automotive data, like or what fly glass or whatever, um, to get to the point where you didn't have to recopy and paste anything. And then it'll push you a notification when it gets to the end of like, I have it set up so when they go, would you like to schedule an appointment? If they say yes or no, it doesn't matter. It'll push me a notification with a summary of what they're interested in and uh, what they like as far as like what their vehicle is and would they like to schedule an appointment is what I know. So I can scroll back through and read it if I want and get the whole conversation broken down. Um, but I really want to build like a better what I would call client mousetrap with the community. Mm -hmm. Because like everybody, I'm sure, is going to have their own take on this thing and have a different way that they want to tweak it to what works best for them. So it would be a lot of fun. Um, I mean, but yeah, it was smart. super, super cool. It's smart because if you if you do it in the sense like if you put a Facebook ad out there and let's say the way they respond is just their name and phone number. If you have – there's scalability issues there, right? At some point, you're going to say, I can't handle all the people that I have to respond to all day. And then you have to get somebody to handle all the people. And eventually they don't, they're not able to handle them all. You have to get two people mm -hmm. and then eventually, you know what I mean? Like it's, but this way it's, it, you know, it's yeah, freaking and like, forget it. A, a couple of things I've noticed with the way it's set up right now is like I had it, I went through all this work, I set it up, uh, designed it in a way that I felt worked really well, showed it off on Facebook and then I was watching some clients. Uh, they just completely ignored it and just blurted out what they wanted. I didn't land a single one of those clients, but I noticed everyone that took the time to go through that that little trail was my client. And then they were the ones that were booking without it being an issue. And I was just like, holy shit, this might just be an interesting way of weeding out different types of customers that you don't even, you know, you, you kind of have a sense like, oh, maybe they're just price shopping. Maybe they're just super impulsive. I'm not saying that you wouldn't land any of those people, but... Right. Like, it was just really interesting, the clear difference between those people. Oh, and I feel like there's for sure people who look at it and click off of it. And, like, that's what it is. But it doesn't matter. Like, mm -hmm. you're never going to get 100%. But which no. group do you want to get and how do you get them? And that's all that matters, right? Yeah, I was really happy. It's just, like, right off the bat, the type of clients that I was starting to get, you know, I didn't know if I'd have to work myself up over time. Um, and I'm sure, it, you know, more will come with time. Um, better clients or whatever, but like just in the beginning, it was like already I'm starting to land um, three hundred, four hundred dollar carbon jobs right out of here, wow. and like, dude, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You can do it from from anywhere. So, yeah. really, really encouraging right off the bat. Um, so Patrick put in the chat kind of off topic, but the tint off is rescheduled for January twelfth through the fourteenth. Oh, so, I just saw that. Yeah, yeah, tint off is rescheduled. It'll still be in Orlando, but it won't be in September. It'll be in January the twelfth through the fourteenth. Mm -hmm. Think you'll make it? What's January look like for you? I hope so. But me and my wife are just talking about it. Um, we're gonna have at that point a two month old. Well, <laughs> well congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, man. But yeah, so we, our babies do uh, like mid November right now. So it's going to be like, oh, shoot. I don't know if we, like I, it would be such a good time of the year to go down to Florida. It would be the Florida, worst though. timing. Oh, with my a new God. Kid, though, frankly, don't you think? Dude, like it would just I, be the worst. Like, 
Don't even. <laughs> The uh, the weather would be fantastic though down there compared to up here. Oh my god, that's the time of year where really it's like things not not grind to a complete halt. But you know we have those long winter days. It, it gets dark super early, and you're just like you get so over it. It's, you know it's not long, not that long after Christmas and stuff like that. So right. it would be really fun to just take a vacation down there for like well, like an extra week. Really, I hope you do. But if you don't. If you mm. help me get that GoPro set up, I'll wear it the entire time, <laughs> straight on my head, just so you can, uh, everybody you'll, can live stream. You'll be hot swapping batteries in the corner or whatever. I'll have, a, keep it I'll going. have a battery backpack and I'll have it wired to my battery. Oh, there backpack. you go. <laughs> it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Carrie said babies change everything. Yeah. yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I. I've talked to Patrick's plenty of times when, like, he gets off of work. It's another story. He's got a bunch of kids to take care of. So, yeah. Yeah, I we're just finally now getting to that point. And it's like, I'm excited, but I'm also, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a big change for sure. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the cliche saying, I think, is, like, you're never ready. Like, nobody's ever ready. Um, but yeah. everybody seems to do it. So it should be, like... <laughs> just like you're able to do it. You're right. It's like there's a bunch of other people that have had kids, so I'm pretty sure we'll be okay. But right. yeah, and you know, the more that, like we, we talked about it a little while ago too, and uh, like it was like months ago we talked about it, and we were just like, you know, we'd like to at least be settled down somewhere where we felt like we could stay for a little bit longer. Um, you know, we were in an apartment. We at least wanted to move into a house mm -hmm. um, with a little bit more space, and then I just got this going. And so it's really like we're at this point where it's like we're not going to be making any serious moves soon. So it's just it, it's working out pretty well. So I know a lot of people, the unexpected times and whatnot. But this for us, it, it really is it's going to be OK. Yeah, well, it's um, it's an amazing example you're setting in the sense that, like, you know, you set up this business. It's a unique business. It's going well. You're working from home. And then mm -hmm. you can, you know, you can have a kid and, you know, like it's, it's a cool model. It's just a cool model because like if you're not home, that's a game changer. That's completely different. If you're 30 minutes or an hour away from the house with an with mm -hmm. a expecting wife, with a new child, the whole deal. So like I, I really feel like you're, you know, I hope I'm sure tens of thousands of people see your YouTube channel, but I, I hope it clicks because it's it's an opportunity for a lot of people maybe aren't happy in their own job, maybe have to drive really far, whatever it is, and it's a high quality of life. And I don't, yeah. you're not really sacrificing. I don't know the sacrifice. I don't see it. It's not apparent. No, it's it's it was intentionally set up this way. I, I've just, I don't know. I, I've never wanted to necessarily set up my own full-blown shop. Because it, it seems like you either go hard now into a lot of services, and I know you don't have to. There's some that can be window tinting specific, but just like from my experience in my area, um, you, you either pick up a couple of businesses or you go really hard into offering more than just window tinting and like be like an, a little bit of an encompassing place that, that offers a, a little range of services around window tinting like PPF vinyl work and stuff like that and then you you bring in some extra employees and it's a lot of extra work um but if you want to stay uh, specifically in window tinting um even then like you know you get tied to your shop you have operating hours you're basically you're setting yourself up to be on customers time not your own time and that might sound selfish in a way but i, I just you know getting there 9 a.m and, the, and then waiting for people to come to you and then you get people that just don't respect your time uh, here and there where they just don't show up for an appointment or yeah. whatever the case may be. And then you're just left twiddling your thumbs waiting for the next person to show up and then eventually ramp up your business. But you're always tied to that space. You always got to be there at those hours and stuff like that. For me, I, I just like I'm handling things at, at my own pace. I still have a shop that I take care of two days a week and then I come back here. For the rest of it and i'm just trying you know between now i've got more time to do content now i have more time to like actually put into the one car that i want to do um and then broadcast that to the people that i want to broadcast that to so it's been i don't know a really really cool setup i'm i'm super happy with the way that it's going right now yeah and it's it's like a perfect opposite like the you know like the um of like what you just said where you open a shop and you 
you just then you're like, oh, I need to add more services, or you're like, well, I have to handle more customers, or people are banging right. on my door, and like, you know, when you said like maybe it's a little selfish to be on your time, well, you trying to be on your time is then squeezing out a better service for a certain type of customer who wants to be on like equal, like they respect your time and you respect their time. So I, I'm imagining that there's never a scenario where you have three customers waiting for you while you finish mm -hmm. another car to get to their car and then so on. That never happens. And that's probably no. one of the biggest annoyances of getting your windows tinted is if you go for an appointment, you got to sit there for four hours. Yeah, that XTS that I did with a full windshield, I scheduled that out for like four hours. And I was just like, we're going to just warm up to this car. I get to talk to chat. The guy mm -hmm. said, literally, he's like, look, I don't want this car rushed in any way. So he was like more than happy to let it sit. He dropped it off at nine, picked it up at three. And it's like we just made a super cool morning slash at early afternoon of it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but that's yeah, that's the way I like. And and earlier on, I never really thought that was that was much of a possibility um, because I was raised around uh, automotive accessory companies and me seeing mechanic shops and everybody, you know, has a shop and they pull in cars and that's what they do. That's the way things are done. Right. But I've, I've always like kept my eye open on other things. I've always questioned a lot of what is done and why is it done that way and are there different ways or better ways to do basically absolutely everything that you do. I, I try to go with what works best, but with that creative angle where you can kind of just, you know, and then, you know, as live streaming started to pick up, as we started, you know, the channel starts picking up a little bit more, but I noticed this really good connection uh, with my community when we went live and stuff like that. So I really wanted to do something that facilitated that a lot more. And I, like, even in big, nice shops, I still haven't had that opportunity. So it's like, I literally have to, create my own space to make that happen yeah well your shop now uh, behind you with when the lights are lower and you have kind of the neons going and the, right the the way the backdrop looks like Boop. It, it's boutique <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> boutique and for anybody who comes across it online i feel like once they see it it's going to be hard to unsee it and go with a shop mm -hmm. once you know how much care matt takes of the installation and it's streamed and how, how much time he takes and so on and there's no rush and you know that you're doing it it's hard to then if you care about your car put it in just some random persons that you don't even know what the person that's look you know and, and that's a business too there's nothing wrong with that but this is an mm -hmm. example of doing it a different way provides a, it just gives a different result simple as that yeah. and it's a different value for a customer and you're going to naturally attract customers i think that are a good fit for you yeah, I really think so. I was I was nervous with, you know, talking to customers um, like because I never had this. You need to make like this introduction in, in a way where they kind of get a concept for what you're about. And you don't when you're like whenever it was at any traditional shop, it's all also foreign. Like they're just walking in for window tint or whatever. Maybe they're like, oh, you do YouTube. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they don't know anything about your channel or, or whatever. So, but now that when they get an introduction of it beforehand, they completely embrace what's going on. And this last live stream, I even had a customer who already had his car done, just come back to tune in and watch another one. And just like, he just likes the experience and likes watching it. So it was, it was really cool. One thing I'm super excited about too is I'm getting a race deck floor, so I finally get to carve all this That's garbage cool. up right here. It's been my my eyesore that I've been like, oh man, I, like every picture I'm like, I want to cover up that floor. Finally oh, getting one. Thick. So you saw it's gonna um, look Carlos from Texas. I don't know if you saw, he got a yellow and black like race deck type floor, like the no, and it's like checkered yellow and black, and it just looks. Yeah. It just looks sick. Like it just, you know, and like, especially like if you do like a border, you do like whatever you do, yep. it just mm -hmm. it's like game changing transformation for how the floor looks. We're doing, we're doing a dark black border with a lime green border around that, or like on the inside of that, there's a lot of, with like a, a lighter gray in, in the middle, it'll look really, really good. Yeah. I'm super excited for that. I bet. Good for you. Cause that is going to take like, you're, it already looks like you're getting your t car tinted in a like in a boutique like in a studio i mean did, did uh -huh. your name perfectly you know yep yep that's exactly like the whole studio vibe to this place is really what i wanted to to get across even though like 
you know, working at a bunch of different places, I always paid attention to it's like, so how much money are we doing out of this little space right here? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my, my, uh, working with my dad, he has a 6,000 square foot building. He can pull in a lot of cars and stuff like that. And like a lot of the time in the beginning, it was just me tinting out of like a small bay. Like that's, that's all it was in and out cars all day long. And it's just like, it, you don't need a big space. You don't need a like a crazy space. You can do whatever you want with like a small space. So you can, and we're, we're going real hard into like, I don't know, some tech and just some lighting and shit like that. It's super fun. It's cool because you embrace the small space and you mm -hmm. put it in, in the forefront and you make the most of it and it becomes a value as opposed to somebody who's maybe like, Oh, I'm just hinting out of my garage. So like, you know, it's mm -hmm. like blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it's all mentality. And, you know, I think like, like you said, big shops, like, you know, you, you end up making all your money in one little area, but you have a big shop. I think anybody who has a shop tomorrow morning, the first thing you should do when you walk in there, if, if you have the opportunity is look around and see how much shit you have around your shop that is taking up space that you haven't looked at or touched in like a year. And if you haven't yeah. touched that shit in a year and it's on shelves and you pack stuff up, get rid of all that shit and use the space. And if you don't use it, at least it's empty. It's better mm -hmm. than packed with shit like rims and all sorts of shit people accumulate it's crazy boxes yeah yeah my one of my rules with this place is like I, there's some stuff on the floors over here but as we're getting into things the floor is lava so we're trying yeah. to like put everything up on the walls but in a cool way where yeah. it's almost on display so like the fact that geo shield has those pretty boxes back there man oh a, like because i was using avery and they yeah. had colorful boxes too um, when they were Hanita, but then they, they, they switched to the ugly brown boxes and it's like, oh man, those would look horrible up there. But I now you should, that's the like worst move ever. <sighs> it's just so one of those moves that's like, you know, I get it. You see, if you actually see what your clients do with the boxes, for the most part, they're always like packed away on shelves in the oh, back and customers don't see it. But uh, at least that's what like, I, for, for like a corporate face value, that's maybe what I would get their impression to be. But they can like when oh man it was so disheartening because yeah it's like I got a couple over there they're just eyesores for the most part but these ones they're just fucking cool. So I think there's nothing worse than when you get a box in the mail and it's falling apart like a film and it's just sure. mashed up. Like to me I'm like damn like I don't want that box that got mashed up but it is what it is. Then you're maybe taping the sides and then potentially you're taking that to a customer's house or you know if it's cartoned it's just mm -hmm. you're using it but like. I mean, I just think from like a deal from a manufacturer's point of view, it's like it's obvious to recognize that packaging has a huge role. Like I throw away my iPhone box, but it's still nice that when I open my iPhone, it's in a nice box. I mean, and I think Ceramic Pro executed on that perfectly. Like you're going to use a bottle of Ceramic Pro 9H in maybe two cars, three cars, four cars, whatever it is. But that box is just as nice as an iPhone and you're going to have tons of them and you're going to throw them away. But it, it's so nice that you can use them as a display and stack them up on your wall because they're that yeah. easy to look at. And yeah, I, think, I, like, I you're going to pay more. I actually, yeah, I actually save a lot of my boxes. So like the, the old iPhone boxes, I actually still have those. Used to be a big Mac guy. Um, still have all like any pretty boxes that I get. For some reason, I have a harder time throwing them right. away. Just because of the work that went in, they sit on a shelf or like in a closet or whatever. But like, I still keep them. I think a lot of those tech, tech companies took a cue from Apple and really like all stepped up like their their unboxing experiences. And then there was whole channels based around it and stuff like that. And then you know you kind of saw the same thing with the PC world with everybody. You know, PCs they just they don't need to be on display, right? They just mm -hmm. can sit under a desk and still perform as well as any other ones. But then they started paying, putting a lot more into the aesthetics of them and then seeing like people love to put them as show pieces. So anything, you know, and, yeah. and there's some stuff that are coming out like uh, like the tint kegs and stuff like that. You know, just having a better spray tank, something yeah. that looks cooler. People yeah. like to show it off. It's just, yeah, it's super fun. Yep. Yeah. Um, Cody just put, spent two grand on film, got it in today for a home it was falling apart and you know we use the box as a tool at times couldn't today i mean what type of film was it cody <laughs> whose box fell apart it probably it sucks. it's a mixture it, between let me guess like fedex and the manufacturer it's got to be like, like kind of any the the farther you that that's what kind of sucks too if you happen to be farther away from your distributor it goes through more abuse on the way there I know some of them would wrap like the whole things up in plastic so that they would turn in nice, but 
you know, I, I get it. I talked to Burns about their boxes. They 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 just cost more money to even uh, put together. So their like, like their bottom know. line is just higher on their film in general. Just just so that you can put pretty boxes if, up on the wall if, if you that, happen to ever want to. <laughs> if that nice box costs, let's call it ten dollars more. I don't mm -hmm. think there's a film out there that you couldn't charge ten dollars more for if it was so nice. Mm -hmm. that everybody's going to be like, no, this shit needs to be ten dollars less, or I'm not buying it. Ten dollars or eight dollars, or maybe you absorb it as a company and it eats into your profit. But you're going to sell way more of it and have a better brand uh, image because of I that. think so. Because I mean, God, I see. I have so many um, people on my channel, and they all talk about film prices and like looking for. Like there's a lot of them that will, of course, talk about buying a film over another film because it was a little bit cheaper. And I get it. But no, you're absolutely right. If that film only costs 10 to 20, even 20 dollars more, I mean, you could go 50 to 100 dollars more. And then when you but when you break that film roll down per car, dude, you always turn, end up way higher in the, at, yeah. at the end of it. You just got to charge yeah. for it. Like even then, you 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 would only be a couple dollars per car if you want to break it down like that. But I mean, most of the time, film margins are so good across vehicles if you price yourself accordingly that that kind of stuff just doesn't matter. So when I started in here, I wasn't screwing around around with any cheap jobs. I have my bottom line that I'll do um, as far as as entry level. And the first thing, if I really have somebody that honestly, I, I like, oh yeah, I want to do that car here. Oh, and, and and I'm talking to the client and stuff like that. I go the free upgrade route rather than trying to just cut my prices down. And that usually has been right. um, has been a seller. So people are excited to get a better film. Um, they like my space and, and they'll go for it. It's not everybody, but generally speaking, that's been what's going on. And then that's led to just right. full bone pricing on, on the full jobs, which has been great. Right. But yeah, the, the, you know, nickel and diming twenty dollars on a film—it's it, just it, it. That's not doing much for you at all. I agree completely. I agree. It's a, you know, it's it's as a manufacturer, it's the same idea as a dealer. You can do the race to the bottom, or you can try to show value. And I just think mm -hmm. the boxes are one way you can show value. And like Avery in general, like I'm surprised such a big, incredible company. They're you know they're no slouch in any sort of way. Um, no quality stuff. They're a great company. It's like yeah. odd that they would have brown boxes, but then even beyond that, like I don't know if you've ever seen like do you, have you seen the PDFs that they have for like homes and cars like for their film types where they show like the different types of films and like they have these like thirty page PDFs. There I I've seen the ones for for Avery and R and I wasn't super impressed with it. <laughs> so and I don't recall like Avery and R. To specifically but i know for like homes, okay. for like homes they stand out to me like the, the home pdfs that like i've come across are like 30 40 pages to me uh -huh. they actually lay out like they're really nice so like oh that's cool. i think they lay out like what a customer is looking for in like big easy to read text that is like you understand like what tint does for your home and like the thing is I used to sell plenty of Hanita tech and I guess maybe that was the problem. It wasn't Avery or what? Cause I know it was, but my point being like, I, I never, I never saw paper versions of these, but these would have been like, I just feel like these printed out would be incredible to hand a customer. So like if we're talking about how manufacturers can spend more money um, on their film, like if, mm -hmm. if I'm selling you a box of film, okay. Yeah. You must have found a use for this film, right? So Maybe I can build in, sell, I'm going to send you a box of film and I'm going to send you a box of marketing material for that film so you can use that to sell another box of film. Yeah. And yeah, like, absolutely. They kind of do that with like a co-op. You know, some companies do it with a co-op, but that's still relying on you to order it. If I'm the film company, I'm going to send you samples with the box that I sell and I'm going to sell you sample, send you samples of another film so that you can start selling another film too. And like right. booklets and and anything that they can give their customers and all the little extras and stuff like that. Yeah. Even stuff that you could give out to the customers that all adds up, but like it all adds up in a good way. Like it just makes you stand out. Yeah. yeah. Somebody in the, in the chat said solar effects boxes and I know they've stood out from having like a bunch of extras and stuff like that. I think that I saw them have like energy drinks and like branded glass cleaners and stuff like that. That that's the kind of extras. Those are really cool. cool. And you think, you think, okay, yeah, it's going to cost more per box, right? But if you start mm -hmm. factoring in like what are the costs of having salespeople that have to go like push your film down dealers' throats sometimes to get them to carry your film, like what's the cost of that? 
That's true. So if you're using it to like supplement something like that, it makes a lot more sense. And in this day and age, like uh, just with all the extra little marketing things that you can do, I mean, honestly, I, there's a couple of things that I, I want to, I, I got to talk to GeoShield about as far as the, the pamphlets goes, because I think um, between the differences of the way that the C2 one looks versus the Pro Nano, I, I want to actually get them to design it in a way that looks better in a in like a text format, in like a social media format. So when somebody gets it, it's like you know it, the the clear points are right there. There's just a few things. Overall, it looks really good, um, but it's more for like a display. But I think we could do some things that'll that'll format it a little bit better for like the my type of purposes and stuff like that. And really, kind of like. I don't know. You, when you when you start to do that and you start to show other people, then it then it starts the wheels turning. I think of a lot of companies, and maybe we'll see some pickup just in general. Yeah. So that would be really helpful. Yeah, because um, because I feel like you know the uh, I know there's still a place for reps for manufacturer reps in the industry. Of course, there's a place. Of course, there's a huge, huge, huge amount of tint dealers that are used to having a rep and they want mm -hmm. that sort of attention and so on. But I just feel like that's at the end of the day, kind of like a dying, it's, it's going to be less and less. It's not going to be more and more and, and communication online between dealers and manufacturers is going to be the more and more. And like, I just feel like dealer, like manufacturers have to figure out the ways they can add value and reach customers directly, their customers, which are the tint shops versus not investing that and, and it's still being so much of an effort of, you know, men on the street or men or women, but like, you know, people on the street. Um, it's, it's, a, yeah, it, it's such a, such a cold, hard sell. It's really difficult because most of the time, I, I mean, I, speaking of personal experience, when reps would come in, they would always seem to come in on bad days. Like not necessarily that I was like having a hard time with cars, but just, you know, things are happening and you mm -hmm. don't necessarily have a lot of time, but then they drove all the way there and then they're trying, they only have so much time to stay there with your shop and then they drop off some samples or whatever. And then they're on their way. They maybe have a few minutes to talk to you, but they're not, they're not actually, most of them are not actual tinters either. So then you also feel very sold to, and there's, you know, it, it's just, it's a rough type of thing. Eventually I think it starts to pay off, but I think it would just pay off as much as, sending them samples and having good marketing material and having a good reputation mm -hmm. because like most of the time, most, it, most people don't seem to want to change film brands until they run into a significant issue, sure. whether that be the film starts getting wavy, the, you start seeing failures or, um, you know, you can't get your film on time or something like that. Uh, when you start running into issues like that, then you start browsing around and that's when those reps really right. start to make their money back. But, yeah, overall, it's it's something that's a little bit, yeah, I, I think a little outdated, I agree. I mean, like you said, there's going to be, it, like, people are going to switch film failures and so on. But, like, let's just take film failures out of there and assume that, like, the good companies aren't going to have, like, significant film failures, you know, for the most part. Um, the next thing that's probably going to happen is you're going to get, a no as a tint shop, you're going to get annoyed with your rep for something. And it might be mm -hmm. your rep put a dealer too close to you. It might be your reps unavailable. It might be you got the wrong film in like sent to you um, or it just didn't arrive at all. It's like that kind of shit. And like, I just feel like as a company, like if, if, if you're manufacturing film and you're, you're looking for dealer loyalty, instead of twisting a dealer's arm for loyalty, cause that's never going to work. Just like invest in making sure those other things don't happen. And when they do happen, there's a good system in place. So you feel good about it. Cause like, <coughs> excuse me. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I use DoorDash. And there's like, okay. I mean, everybody uses DoorDash. Who the hell doesn't? But a couple times, DoorDash, like I got my, the wrong food. Like it, it, it was like missing stuff or whatnot. Like it's happened. Uh -huh. And when when it happens, like, man, in my mind, I'm like, now I have to call the restaurant and explain to them what happened. And, all, and like to me, I'm like, I don't want to do that shit at all. Well, DoorDash doesn't want you to do it either. You just click on their app. It asks you, was it a problem with your order? You say it was. And then their res resolution is they'll give you back more than the amount of the food. Because your initial thing, you're like, well, I just wanted my food. Well, that's fine. If you were missing $20 worth of food, they'll refund you like $26 or like $28. And like, oh, wow. it's just done. It happens instantly. You get that money in your account in one second. And like, yeah, that's better that's than cool. having like people on the phone that you're trying to train to help me and then deal like 
it just the, it was an easy way. Yeah, more and more people people don't like talking to like customer reps and stuff like that. They, it's like it's a barrier to entry. Um, you know, when you go to the grocery store, self checkout is always way busier than any of the cashiers for the most part. Like people just don't want to deal with the with the human to human interaction a lot of the times. No. Um, but yeah, it, Amazon kind of does the same thing with like the returns too. Like they had this immediate, like as soon as they got a tracking number for it or something, when you dropped it off at like the post office, yeah. boom, you had that money right back in your pocket. Yep. That, that was a cool one too. So, and that keeps you on as a customer for sure. So yeah, like if, if there's a couple comments I want to jump to, but before that, like if, if I'm running a window tint manufacturer, I think like if, if you use Shopify before. Oh, dude, I, I have a Shopify okay, store. So it's you amazing. Know, like, how easy is it to track your inventory? How easy is it for you to print a label? Oh, and the customer, do you have to tell the customer your stuff's been shipped? No, they no. get an email automatically with the tracking number. Like, you have to do nothing. They get an email when it's arrived. Like, they, yep. it's all automatic. And then you go, well, does that, do you ever, does that ever happen with like any tint you order? Uh, no, no, not usually. But for the most part, I just go. I, I would go to pick it up. But yeah, it's it's but, very like they use some different, like some older school systems. I think a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, but like you know, like okay, Ceramic Pro has like if you order from like um, certain certain distributors of Ceramic Pro, you're gonna get that Shopify experience. And like I mm -hmm. think like you know, if you're Eastman, what you're gonna say is, well, we have all these systems in place, and we use Salesforce, and it's so many layers, and we have this system works with this other system that works with our they ordering systems, and systems. <laughs> but like right. But here's the thing: like if that's the case, I understand that becomes the burden to doing it, but it should also be the reason why you realize it's so necessary because the companies who do say, oh, we're not doing that, we're gonna do it this way, they're gonna save so much manpower, they're gonna add so much accuracy and better customer service to their to their process that you're gonna do it eventually. It's going to happen. I, okay, so I could like nerd out on Shopify for so long. Um, I, I've dealt with, I haven't dealt with a lot of e-commerce platforms, but I have dealt a lot with WordPress um, and we had WooCommerce there. And just the way that it was set up was like, was painfully annoying because when I wanted to set up shipping, mm -hmm. it wouldn't like, I had to find a third party shipping app. And then when I finally paid for that and set that all up and then went through like two days of trying to figure out the different packages and, and the weights and then trying to like I ran into technical difficulties trying to pull real time uh, estimates from carriers and stuff like that. Um, I got to this point where like it was finally set up and then it was disconnected from the actual label the the buy, buying a label and then and then printing the label. Mm -hmm. So then I not only had to go I had to copy and paste everything into a whole nother software, but I didn't find that out to the end. And then I switched over to Shopify uh, when I relaunched Glassade and dude it has just been on Easy. point. They take care of so many things, yep. including just like, okay, here's your store template. You have a bunch of them to pick from and you can change them pretty much anytime you want. And then it was just like they send the customer an email. They were compiling an email list for me. Mm -hmm. And then I learned about some uh, abandoned cart checkout uh, mm -hmm. rates, which it then sends them a follow-up email if yep. they've abandoned the cart but put in their like information in some way, shape, or form. It automatically just did that shit for me. And I was just like, yep. what the fuck? And then they get they get a confirmation that it was a, a tracking number when it's on the way, when it's been delivered, they get another email as soon as yeah. it's been delivered. Like it's dude, it's been crazy. And, and it's so it, snappy and And if you call if you call like I mean, I don't even want I don't want to put companies on blast, but how many how many tin companies do that? Instead you call a customer service, you ask what you want, they ask you what again, then they repeat it to you. Hopefully it's right. Then they hopefully what card do you want to charge today? And, and then you hope that it comes and like it's like it's so silly. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, shoot, I'm losing my train of thought. Yeah, it's it's just the, just the way that Shopify. Oh, I did one other thing for Shopify. So they have that wonderful app store that you can end up uh, spending way too much money in um, because they have so many intuitive little like add-ons for your company. But the they had they've they've really upped their game with what I've seen um, recently uh, since I've been using it. But there's, uh, I have stream alerts enabled actually, and that's something that comes from the whole gaming world. So when I'm live streaming, and then somebody picks up Glassade, 
this shit pops up on screen with a thank you for them That's picking you. it up. Like it did. It, it's so much fun. <laughs> That's cool. So, so it's like you'd almost expect people to like to wait while you're on stream to then all of a sudden like place an order or something like that. So if I was a film company, I did that. Like forget about it. <laughs> but, right. But like think about it. What if a film company gets on there? Right. Look. Let me give you an example. You got. And then I want to jump in these comments because some of them are really good. Um. So or they're all really good. But some of them. Whatever. Um. <laughs> so if you're a film company, a little wild, but who knows? If you yeah. were to go, if you were to say, hey. I'm I'm Eric. I'm going to be your customer service representative, and I'm going to be live streaming from 6 a.m. Eastern all the way to 6 p.m. Pacific. And mm -hmm. um, you just you know follow this link or go to the app, click on the app, and here I am. I'm live, and anybody can come in here and ask me questions, right? And then purchases show up in that live stream, and I'm helpful, and and so on. Like that could be a whole different like dimension of manufacturer to tin company interaction where you can go ask any questions. You need, hey, I need help with this. How do you do this? And it's like boom, 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 like. That, that's one rep helping the world versus like yeah. you wondering what your rep's doing from home and you're checking Salesforce to see what they inputted today and check reports and people managing people. and it's, It would be a monster. I'm actually I'm kind of looking how to do that, but I'm not a film company. So the like you might have seen a couple of random live stream tests today. Yep. Um, so what I'm trying to do um, I'm, I'm trying this with Discord, I'm trying this with Facebook, now trying it with Instagram. Instagram seems to be working better. But like, the, so with Facebook groups, they're, they're like, they're almost like posting statements. Like somebody thinks too long of what they're typing and then they, they post a thing or whatever. It's like, it's somewhat of a conversation. It's the best conversation platform that's around, but it's still, it's not quite just a casual conversation on the phone. Sure. It's not as as easy as sending text messages to somebody or whatever. Not quite. Um, but what I'm trying to do is basically go live in a way that is almost like a way to facilitate answering a lot of those direct messages where people like, you know, have 10 or 20 questions about whatever, but I don't have the time to sit there and text back all day. So a lot of those messages can go unanswered, um, which is which is a huge bummer. So if I can like if I'm tinning a car and I'm not doing like a live stream on here, I could have like a platform where I literally just set it up and I have my headset and I can uh, check back and forth and literally bring people on live or whatever, like a phone call and then other people can listen and then help answering just more questions and shit like that. That is something cool. that I'm actively trying to work on. Yeah, that's it's super cool. And if you were to get it, like somebody to edit it and chop it up and take the questions out of there and make them standalone questions, then yeah. other people, like they come up and search and it becomes content and so on. That's an yeah. awesome idea. Yeah, it, like it, just being able to like jump on or see somebody that's like, hey, I have a question about, about that car or I, you know, I don't know how many people ask me about bubbles and stuff like that. And, and it's like I've, I either have a video, but more and more people want the answers here and they want it now and if they can't find it within the few seconds of searching the person that is there to answer those questions will like absolutely win the business or whatever like you have to almost make yourself on demand for them in a sense but like i want to do it in a way that actually makes sense like when i can you know be at work or whatever tinting a car and then just pop on live and like oh yeah come on live and then we can talk about it like that would be super fun i agree so. And eventually once like when like maybe I, me as a customer has like VR headset on and I like join you in, in your studio <laughs> and to ask you a question and then you're kind of like tinting and talking to me, you know, and I'm with you walking around the car. Oh, uh, that'd be funny. Comment. Yeah, right. Like who knows where it could actually go. I've had I've had a couple of people ask me about like doing live one on one uh, video chat training in some type of way. And I'm like. They were actually coming out with more ideas than I were uh, as far as like, you know, yeah, you could basically just have a car as a template. That would be enough to help me out. Like, even though it's not the specific car, it would be enough. And it's like, oh, OK, cool. Maybe we have to do something like that. Mm -hmm. so. so, um, Matt Piazza said 44 Tools has live chat if there's questions. And good, I mean, 44 mm -hmm. Tools, I think, is like definitely on the ahead of things like they're they run a, a great e-commerce site they run a great social media site like you know they're do they a good I'm, I'm curious do they like so i know a lot of tool sites do like Tintipo does too but do like i mean as as specific as you have a problem with like a car like could they be as as specific as something like that like i'm sure it's not quite the I same as like having like a live tinner answering questions no. but 
44 tools, and, and I, I haven't used our live chat, so if anybody has, please put it in there. But 44 tools, yeah. in my understanding, has an auto spa tied to it as well. So they have an auto spa. Again, just my understanding, the building mm -hmm. is an auto spa and it's a tool company. So to me, that's cool because you're probably interacting with people who know all the services and the tools. They're more than just customer service agents. They they know it in, in depthly. So I feel like for them, they probably can answer very specific questions. Mm, okay. Yeah, I know I know Tint Depot does a good job of that with like specifics on tools and inventory and stuff like that. They're pretty good about that. But um, the people that handle the chat aren't aren't tinters in that regard. So uh, it's, that, it's that would be an interesting twist on it for sure. Huge opportunity for like videos like on YouTube. Like if you were to say like, well, how do you deal with whatever this problem on this specific vehicle and you use this tool and they were to do step by steps. I mean, I think step by steps are the well, best way to sell tools. Why aren't there videos on most tools on sites? Okay, that, that to me is insane. Crazy. Let me let me push it a little further. Why aren't there like, well, it's just something that I guess it, 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 I came across in personal experience where I was like, why doesn't this exist? But like when I was doing a lot of like printing graphics, like commercial graphics, like okay. there's so much different media and different like, like you could look at a graphic on a window and go, okay, I see that. But like, how did you make that? What, what materials, what did you have to layer in order? What is that? Is that a solvent? Is that a latex? And, so, and what I'm saying is like, there should be, you know, simple as like, hey, that's window perf. This is what you need to print window perf. You need a printer. You need the perf. Maybe you need laminate. This is the tool you need to install it. You can do it dry. You can do it wet. These are the advantages and so on. And if I'm looking at that, I'm going to go, I'm trying to get into window graphics. Okay, I need that printer, that, you know, that ink, that, and like, you'll sell more of it that way. Because I feel like printers in general and those types of medias, like you have to, you almost have to learn from somebody like how to do it or experiment on your own. But like, you, it's, it's. It's not that simple. It's not. It doesn't lay out to. You. It's not like buying a home printer and you're like, well, here's a printer, here's paper, put it in there and it prints. That's right. Not, you know. But yeah, just having a clear cut tutorial on how you did like the cool image that's on your own website uh, for like a graphic or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Like there's so many of these tools where um, you don't really know what they're like until you feel them. But even having some sort of visual cue of them laid out in a row and then somebody bending them in a way or just like talking about them or showing use cases and stuff like that. There's, there's like none of that. No. And you still see on Facebook all day long, every day, like how do you tint this like Subaru, whatever, like how do you, and like if you're a tool company and you're like showing that, like I was looking the other day unrelated to window film, how to like get rid of mold from under a sink, like in cabinets. And like, you know, the guy goes through it and he's like, there's different type of molds, this and that. And then the next thing you know, he has a spray and he's like, this is a spray that's the best one I found. And I'm like, I'm buying that shit. Like, that's it. I'm, yeah, I don't that's even it. know, like he, it's probably a commercial for his company. I don't know, but it seems to solve the problem. I, I'm done, you know? Mm -hmm. and yeah, like, and for, for like a lot of, so when a lot of these tool sites, they lay everything out there and it's, it's cool because there's everything there, but it's also confusing. Um, to anybody that's getting into it because they just see all these random tools and they don't know which ones they, right. they need at all until they have somebody lay them out. Okay, when you're going to tint a window, these are the ones that you probably are going to want to lean towards or the ones that I use in my experience. And then they're just like, yep, let me get those. Yep. I think you break it down, <laughs> right, break it down like, hey, you're an automotive tinter looking to get into flat glass. These are some of the tools you can use that you probably already have. And these are the ones that you might want to get, um, you know, and, and like, if you know, like, hey, I'm getting into tinting, and I think this might exist, and I feel like maybe even 44 Tools is the company that did it, where, like, if you want to get into automotive tinting, is there a package of tools you can buy that kind of mm -hmm. give me everything? I just, I want it all. Like, I don't even know what I need, but just give me everything I kind of need to tint a window. Yeah, I know I know a handful of places do actually do that, and and that's cool to see. But, man, it's, you could take it so much further. Mm -hmm. I see, and there's, like, so much direct incentive. You're selling tools. Put a video out there One about video the tool. All night, you're going to need to ching to ching And then you, you take that video. Well, what? It doesn't need to be long. Like, you, nobody's yep. going to sit there. Net, well, I mean, you could have a top five video on popular tools or something like that. But for the most part, you just want, like, a quick, hey, what's this tool like? Where is it helpful? Do I need the thing? And then you just take all those videos, and then you just boost them on Facebook or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh. I mean, that's, so many missed opportunities. So I wanted to address 
a couple comments specifically. Cody mentioned that he didn't even get a shipping confirmation on the boxes that got destroyed, and that the order I'm talking about is our very first film order with them. Uh, Cody, I don't oh. want I don't want to put the company on blast, so just say the letter of the the first letter of the company's name, so you don't actually have to say the company's name. And then I'll say it. <laughs> but just, just at least give us the letter of the first name, so we can know who's sending out shitty boxes. Because if they're called out, this is the thing: if they're called out, then they're going to improve. But if they slide <laughs> under the radar, there's no reason to do anything better. Yeah, but some of that could also be definitely out of their control where they didn't intend that to happen, but yeah. It could definitely be out of their control. UPS, FedEx, like, shit happens. But, you know, yeah, cause partial responsibility I, goes to them still, though, if they're sending out shitty boxes. <laughs> but yeah, very true. They could have done something, right? It does. Sometimes you're, you are package like four boxes together. Like it's a security box. If it's if you're shipping security film and you don't put those he, like those heavy duty cardboard corners on them, like that shit's gonna oh. get ripped up as hell. Like that's a thousand pounds of film in a box. So like mm. if that happens, that's not UPS's fault. That's you, you can buy those corners and stick them on there and 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 make the box arrive right. And like yeah, who wants I've, to get I've it destroyed? Seen those but yeah, yeah those like straps around it too, and then they they get jostled a lot, and they'll dig into the boxes themselves and start ripping them apart too. So, what do you, what do you do with with a, a a box of twelve mil security film where the box is is half ripped off on the side? What do you put that in another box? Like you don't have a box. Like w what happens is that film starts to get beat up unless you use mm -hmm. it right away, or you can't really store it because. It's f it's yeah, if up. you put anything oh. on it, it's just gonna start putting pressure on the roll. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to mention here I thought was funny, um, Jeremiah Bienko said, sometimes I like to see when a company is not offering me drink bottles and t-shirts and banners, they are not all about branding. Sometimes to me, I'm cautious of companies that have tons of useless branding items. And then Carrie said, you know, my feelings are hurt. And as she sips out of a tint whiz mug, and then he clarified, he's just saying some companies seem to be all about branding and not much about everything else. I'm weary of them. I, Jeremiah, I completely agree with you. So what I don't like is when a company like... If you if I if a company sends me like a stress ball and like maybe like a pop socket and like a like a ma like I don't know like a bunch of shit that you know is like this was on the front page of like a promo's website promo web like to me it's not about them giving you things it's not about branding it's about showing quality and showing that there's effort behind it so like if right. you send me a bunch of bullshit I know there's no effort behind that the, I get that feeling you get, you know? That's exactly that's exactly it. I'm pulling up my cart. I should have one right in here. I don't know. I got to look for Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, perfect example right here. It's it, it's the effort that you put into it, I think is really what it comes down to. Cuz you have a lot of like print on demand places and you can just scroll through a quick catalog. Yep, click put my logo on that, put my logo on that, put my logo on that. And people can see through that. Like, sure, you're going to appreciate it on some level. But, like, when you see your your logo on a pen, yep. there's a thousand other companies yep. that are doing the exact same thing. But when you integrate your branding with something that people like, mm -hmm. dude, holy shit. That's just – that's next level stuff. I, like, I, I don't know how many people – I actually talked to uh, – yeah, the, to, to Jay about a little bit of the manufacturing of those – Holy shit, there was some effort that went into that. He made it happen. And Jay, <laughs> oh Jay Jay's the owner of TriEdge and like you know, he made it happen. He's he he would call me and he'd go, "Hey man, we're having some trouble with the printing blah blah blah." And I'm just like thinking in my head like, "No problem, like it's not a big deal." But by the end of his sentence, he was like, "But we think we have it figured out." And that you know, oh, okay. and it was just like he was always making it happen and he made it happen. Yeah. I, the you had to like sponge a primer onto it and then print it and then give it dry. Oh my god, the work that went into every single one of those is just insane. And then Patrick yep. with the oh I hit myself in the face with the with the dry shrink prep bags yep. too. Like it's just and then you know they had the pretty labels on it and it's just like when that attention to detail on a collaborative product is really really cool. Hey, it comes down to like if you're sending people things like either they're gonna find value in it or. Like if they're not, at least they should see you care. Like, you know, at least like, mm -hmm. so if you don't put any effort into it, like they're receiving something that has no effort put into it, that you're going to transfer that no effort into the no excitement when you get it. It's that simple. Yeah.
And the, and that that goes the same with pretty much I guess all branding and like what specifically like Reebok window films. I think that's why so many people have an issue with with so many different companies is that you know we don't at face value see any more effort than a different label on a film that we already know where it came from. So of course we're not going to appreciate it because it doesn't look like you put a lot of thought into the design of of what's in the box. So if you can find a way to illustrate that, make it apparent or at the very least, teach people how to install your own film. I mean, that would speak a lot more than just trying to cold hard sell me on on whatever you have in that box. So, yeah, yep, hundred yeah. percent, hundred percent. There's so many ways to add value. You just have to be realistic if you're actually adding value, or you're just kind of, eh, yeah, this is adding value. Is it really adding value? Yeah, right. Yep, hundred um, percent. Cody ratted out the company who i'm just kidding it's not ratting out i specifically asked cody mentioned the company that did it he said um i have pictures it's not fedex fully although i hate fedex fedex is probably the worst i feel like um i love ups the end flaps are half the size it should be i already sent him a picture and emails and so on so that's cool and like that's what you got to do you got to give him feedback and give him an opportunity to correct this and that's yep it. that's really important mm -hmm. you got to yep. give, give him an the opportunity, opportunity as as hard as that is sometimes in this day and age too, um, I've seen it on both ends where it's like they will try and put the effort into packaging it and sending it out and then it's just like honest mistakes happen. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it is tough to do that That's too. That's the thing. It, it, if you have mm -hmm. some debris in the window tint and some window film you just installed, you want the customer to give you the opportunity to fix it. So you give the manufacturer that same opportunity. They have to know about it for one and you have to mm -hmm. be, be nice, you know, give them the opportunity to fix it. They, That's, that's how everybody lives and learns. So yeah. Um, that's yeah, I and feedback. Yeah, a lot of times you just see like you know the first thing that they do is post it on social media and then <laughs> try and just blow up Facebook groups about it and it's, then just it's yeah that kind of shit. You know, I'm jo like joking around, obviously asking Cody to call out the company because I'm curious. But like when you go on, but I don't think I don't think it's in a bad way. I actually really like the company he mentioned, and and it sucks that the box came like shit. I think most get, most manufacturers have sent out boxes that have arrived like shit. So you know it is what it is, but. Um, yeah. I think it's very irresponsible when a company goes on Facebook and bashes a manufacturer or, you know, an industry related company without giving the, them the opportunity to resolve the problem. Because, you know, it's it's no different. It's a very, very exactly the same as if a com if a if a customer of yours was to do that over an issue that they had with your business. You want the opportunity to fix it. You don't want them to just go leave you a one star review on every place they can ever find and try and destroy your business. And you don't want that over mm -hmm. what, you know, give them the opportunity. And, you know, it may feel like fun to get a, build a mob on Facebook, um, to bash a company, but like mm -hmm. that company is people and those people, you know, work really hard, most likely to build that company. And they're trying to do the best they can just as you are in your own company. And I, I just, that, that kind of shit, I think irresponsible is just the word I want to tag to it. Like, don't be one of those people who who think it's funny to bash a company because, again, that company has a family tied behind it, and employees tied behind it. Unless and you know, unless they really deserve it, unless they really, yeah. really deserve it. Yeah, and I, I don't think most people realize, and I, I put the fault a little bit on the companies themselves. How how small time some of these these places are as far as like you know family run businesses and whatnot. Um, there's definitely a lot of that in this industry, and I didn't even realize to the extent, um, like, shoot, at this point, I think it's probably like two or three years ago, but I've been tending for like um, 11 years now, and I didn't find out until like literally like three years ago, they did a live stream, like back when United was, was doing a lot of live streams with like industry uh, business owners and stuff like that. And that was like fusion. I didn't realize that they were just a small time operation in the U.S. You know, I thought that was literally the name of the handle and, and it didn't go much farther than that. Um, but the uh, yeah, I, it's just, you know, that goes hand in hand. They need to make a presence for themselves and let like, you know, you get a sense of the company. That's what I'm trying to do here. Give people a sense of who I am as a business. And then let them decide if they want to do business with me. But That's yeah, it. if you just stick with the just exclusively the pretty branding and, and then like a big corporate uh, image, sometimes that doesn't always work out so well when you run into a problem like that. No, we're in an, we're in a day and age of authenticity. And, you know, you have to put your best foots forward, your authentic foots forward. You have to be the best you can be. And, you know, you're not going to fool anybody these days. Like you're going to attract people by being the best. And by mm -hmm. doing things that people are attracted to, 
mm-hmm. not by trying to tell them otherwise or hide or you know scream and shout with ads and, and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um. So. <laughs> Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I, I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna put bring the comment this one on the screen, and then I'll let you take it away. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I can handle this. <laughs> um, so there's a there's a comment from Michael. Um, what does Matt think about Patrick's comment the other night? I I just flat out uh, deleted the post because I I don't feed into drama like that. Uh, it's kind of weird. Um, like I saw the post happen in the group. I'm not going to call it specifics. Um, all I'm going to say is things seem to be set up in a way that it was just trying to stir up problems. That's all I'll say. I mean, it was a pretty harsh comment right off the bat, um, on, on the poster side of things that, that seemed to feed into it. And like some people fall into that. Um, but it was deleted and then screenshots were started to be posted everywhere. And that to me is just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a call for attention and it's a call for drama and I, I don't feed into any of that shit. So oh, that's pretty yeah. much all I'm going to say. I think well said, um, in the sense like, look, I didn't see the whole post. I saw screenshots of bits of it afterwards that were shared. Um, mm-hmm. so luckily I didn't see the whole post. So I don't even really have an opinion, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, I, I, I think, you know, so I think we're all guilty of saying things that maybe either, you know, yeah, we could have used different words or yeah, maybe they're interpreted or differently or, you know, but I would just say, don't take it personally. I, I, I don't think, um, anybody in the scenario was like really trying to hurt somebody else. Um, but I think, you know, like you said, when it was shared around it, it definitely, you know, if, look, if you're part of another group, you're going to take that personally. Because now yeah. you're like, wait, this was this is what you're saying. So it, it's just that when when tough. what really came across to me in the beginning was what felt like the intent of of the post, and that's what really struck a chord with me. And I'm just like, I I, I hate seeing stuff like that. It just yeah. drives me crazy. So I just for the most part ignore it and then move on because there's just enough other shit that needs to be done. Yeah. Yep. So um, Cody said Ralph has great boxes. So Ralph from Flex Home, great boxes, and. Um, Right, they do. They have very good looking boxes. And he does actually. I remember a while ago he said it was built like a football. Like that was the way he was designing it. So yeah, I give him props smart. for his boxes for sure. Mm-hmm. Smart. Um, Flex Film does a badass job with Google Ads. Or I'm sorry, Facebook Ads. They have a mm-hmm. badass website. Um, yeah. Super badass website. I think anybody in the industry would use that as like that's like the website if you're looking for e-commerce. Like the badass. The one thing I just want to put out there that I think like, and I think, you know, we can draw our own um, like improvements when you're putting out an ad is like they have an ad that I see all the time and it's like flex film and it's a video and it shows like an old Oldsmobile being pulled into the garage. Uh It's like an old Cutlass and it just like their visual, like their pictures, their ads, everything is fucking perfect. I feel like they do such a great job, but then you're showing me an old Cutlass and I feel like I'm seeing a video from 1980, even so it's not, but the car is <laughs> from 1980. So like, I just, just get that car out of there. And I think you fucking nailed that it. one. That one's a, a total bragging rights for, for window tenors. If, if you can tint that one, then it's uh like, I don't know, for, for a lot of old school guys, that means a lot. So that's why that one would Got be it. there and strike you a know, chord with certain people. That makes sense. And I did see, I, I'm looking at it but, like more of a consumer, like um, seeing it from the consumer end and not, not the industry, you know, but if yeah. I see it on a 2020 car, I'm mm-hmm. like, Dan, that's current. If I see it on something old, I'm like, well, is this still stuff being used? But I, I know it is, but I, I'm just saying, you know? Yeah, I, you definitely can't argue with, with any other branding um, for the most part. The uh, the website is pretty on point. Like, the, they're on pretty point. on top of social media and stuff like that. You know, I got a few gripes, but, like, it's, it's just it, company at face value. Yeah, they, they put out a really good image, and it showed it very early on. Um, they stirred up. I think they caused the whole heat box craze for sure. Like it was just showing people a better way to sell film. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do is yeah. find a better way to do all of this. Yep. And if you're one of those people who, for any reason, um, don't like that brand or don't like the person behind that, like if you're one of those kind of, you know, because people get riled up and they're like, ah, anti this and that, I say this look for all the positive because there's no doubt that that brand has a lot going for it. And 
the gentleman behind that brand, Ralph, like he's been on Tin Wisdom a few times. Like mm -hmm. he's definitely a smart guy. He definitely knows a lot and he's definitely an innovator and he's pushed a lot of things forward. And I think when you see something like that, it's better to position yourself to say, I want to learn from all the great things that this person's done than say, I'm going to be reminded of something I didn't like that happened or I read or something like that. You don't really gain much if you're like, well, this film failed or he didn't cover a warranty once or whatever it is. I just feel like to me, there that's that's kind of a losing situation to focus on. Whereas like mm -hmm. I would be like, hey, what's this guy doing next? Because he's done a lot ahead of the curve, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that that kind of stuff is really inspiring to see. I mean, you don't get enough of that in this industry. You see a lot of other places. They're being very creative with collaborations and stuff like that. Um, gaming specifically, like they seem to just be pushing and pushing uh, further into digital uh, as fast as they can and, and being like extra creative with whatever they do. Who? Um, Say that again. Who is like, no, uh, gaming, like the whole oh, gaming the industry. industry. Gaming, right. Yeah. Right. Right. For mm -hmm. sure. Right. Yeah, it, it's just it's cool to see where just social media is going, sales are going in general, like the whole business side of things is, is evolving, but in such a cool, interactive way. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it's I don't know how this relates to window tempo when you mentioned gaming, like gaming so on the forefront. What I thought was fucking awesome mm -hmm. was that like overnight when this whole um covid thing happened overnight you're watching i don't know if this was there before but like all of a sudden like nascar is on i racing on tv like you're watching <laughs> you're watching nascar drivers play video games on tv and i'm like that's fucking cool like that that just happened overnight i think yeah yeah a, a big part of it like that that whole thing got a boom because everybody was stuck at home and then like what even traditional sports were, were canceled too so it's like they got to put a big, an even bigger push into digital um, and see where that whole thing's going. So there's like a, a, a couple of perfect things happened at, at, that, at the time everybody got locked in. So yeah, look at what be. Fortnite is doing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it's just like that I saw recently with the game Fortnite, there was a collaboration with an artist where they literally gave him a concert in yep. the game that everybody could participate in. Just like, Travis Scott, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, holy shit, that's awesome. Just to like that sort of a crossover, just to yep. stir up business for a video game. Like, that's insane. Tell me you couldn't do something like that with the window foam convention. <laughs> I I don't exactly know what you would do, but yeah. No, yeah, we'd there's... get there virtually somehow. We'd all make cardboard Google Glasses or whatever they're called. The Google VR, remember you pulled them out of cardboard and you slip your phone <laughs> in it? <laughs> and put those over our face. Yeah, that's true. I want to get like the the conversations that you have at the at the tent off. I want to try and figure out how to get those going in a more casual way. I think that's that's what my goal is right now. Well, I have a bunch of goals, but like that's kind of what I'm trying to do with live. Is like I, I talked to a guy very briefly today um, on Instagram, and it's just like those conversations that you wouldn't necessarily have unless you're at the convention. Like it would be really cool if if if. You know, it's so easy to stay on your phone, um, and I do it too plenty of times where I'm not, you know, cold calling people and just saying, hey, dude, what's up, or whatever. Um, but, like, it would be really cool if you could somehow break down that barrier a little bit more and have almost, like, Facebook has, has been trying to do it with their, like, uh, they recently announced their, like, watch, or I forgot what it's called, Facebook Rooms. Where you literally, like, like, you would turn it on and then people could, like, pop in and out and stuff like that. Basically, like, something like that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. I agree. But. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, we should wrap this up. Hour and a half flew by. I think so. Like, nothing. Yeah, man. <laughs> I do this all the time uh, with, with some people. It's just, like, you start talking and then you just lead one thing into the next when when you have commonalities on a bunch of topics, yeah, time goes fast. Yep. Well, Matt, thanks for doing this. Thanks to everyone for watching, especially those who left comments during the live stream because... Um, yeah, this was cool. We got to some more comments this time. I, I know last time a lot of it got unnoticed. I try to involve chat on, on some level whenever I'm doing something, but, like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fun to answer and have that type of conversation with people. So. Yeah. So... Yep. So thanks to everybody and we'll be back next Tuesday. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Have a good night. Thank you.